and welcome to Diabetes Connections in the News. I'm Stacey Sims, and these are the top diabetes stories and headlines of the past seven days. As always, I'm going to link up my sources in the Facebook comments where we are live and in the show notes at diabetes-connections.com when this airs as a podcast so you can read more if you want on your own schedule. In the News is brought to you by Real Good Foods. Find their entree bowls and all of their great products in your local grocery store, Target, or Costco. Our top story, what helps people with diabetes gain better glucose control? Expansion of Medicaid. As part of the 2010 Affordable Care Act, or Obamacare, U.S. states are given the option of expanding Medicaid coverage to more people as a means of reducing the number of people without health insurance. As of today, only 12 states have not taken advantage. A new study finds that blood pressure and glucose control measures have improved in states that have. Now, the researchers behind the study say over the long run, expanding Medicaid eligibility may improve key chronic disease health outcomes for low-income, marginalized populations. Medtronic takes over the intellectual property rights to an implanted infusion pump. This is technology developed by the Alfred E. Mann Foundation. Now, about 25 years ago, there was a lot of buzz about implantable insulin pumps, but it hasn't really panned out. The tech is just what it sounds like, a small insulin pump that goes under the skin and holds enough insulin for a few months. Medtronic had one on the market. They pulled it almost 15 years ago. One of the drawbacks, you have to go to the doctor every time you need to fill the pump. There is other upkeep, but the upside is said to be better control and a lot less thinking about diabetes. So interesting to follow this one. A story way too familiar to too many parents, symptoms of type 1 diabetes not always immediately recognized by primary care providers. This was a study of about 240 kids under 18 published in Pediatric Diabetes. These researchers found that 39% of parents had suspicions of new onset diabetes before they brought their child in for care. And of those, the majority of parents first brought their child to the doctor with symptoms and then ended up bringing the same child to the emergency room within the next four weeks. Now, this was a Swedish study, but research shows, especially during COVID, diagnosis during DKA is increasing in children in many countries, showing the greater need for a better education all around. And we have heard a lot during this pandemic about an increase in new diabetes diagnoses. Well, a new report from Mississippi, where providers are reporting a, quote, massive increase. One pediatric endocrinologist says they've seen up to a 40% increase this year compared to 2019, and that is both type 1 and type 2. So what's going on? There are a lot of theories, including indirect effects of quarantines, closures, and unemployment. It might sound odd to some, but severe emotional stress is thought to be a trigger for diabetes, especially in type 1. And additional research shows that COVID targets the insulin-making pancreatic beta cells. A full understanding may be some time away, but these endos say whatever the reason, the surge is for real. Interesting listener question about Dexcom sensors. Thanks for sending this my way. So here's this photo. It seems that some customers are getting these G6 inserters, brand new in the original packaging, with a label that says, quote, this product meets shelf life extension requirements. Now, I reached out to Dexcom. They told me the stickers are legit. There are updated expiration dates. I have asked for a bit more information as to why they would do something like this. And if it means that all G6 sensors could have extended shelf life, they responded that they aren't going through all the sensors, so only the ones labeled can be considered extended. No answer as to why now or to which part of the sensor or inserter actually expires. I will follow up next time we talk for the podcast. But if you get one of these labeled Dexcom inserters and sensors, the company says it is legit and it is safe. More to come. But first, I want to tell you about one of our great sponsors who helps make Diabetes Connections possible, Real Good Foods, where the mission is be real good. They make nutritious foods, grain-free, high in protein, never added sugar, and from real ingredients. The new entree bowls are great. They have a chicken burrito, a cauliflower mash, and braised beef bowl the lemon chicken I've told you about, and they keep adding to the menu line. You can buy online or find a store near you with their locator. It is right on the website. Very easy to use. I will put a link in the Facebook comments and as always at diabetes-connections.com. Back to the news and big news for a great children's book. JDRF has put Shia Learns About Insulin into their bag of hope. We had the author on the show last year. I'll link that episode up so you can hear the whole story. Shayana Hatchell is a registered nurse, certified diabetes care and education specialist and nurse manager. The story was inspired by her brother, who lives with T1D. 
The JDRF Bag of Hope is given to newly diagnosed children ages 11 and under. Frankly, it's pretty hard to get new products in there, and it's nice to see some more diverse representation. And this last bit of news is noteworthy for what didn't happen. Big Apple News Conference this month with absolutely no mention of blood glucose monitoring. You will recall there was a ton of speculation about this all year long, with many tech websites breathlessly reporting that this was going to happen. This was the time. Look, I do think that it will come. But there is really no hard evidence that anybody has come close to cracking this. Non-invasive, remotely accurate glucose monitoring is really hard. And as I've said all along, we will know it's for real when we see some clinical trials. So as you know, just be careful when you're reading diabetes news from tech websites. We'll always try to get to the bottom of it for you. And please join me wherever you get podcasts for our next episode. The one out right now is with American Idol contestant turned actor Kevin Coveas. He is in a new Netflix show out this month, and he spent some time this summer mentoring teens with type one. He's a fun guy with some great behind the scenes idol stories, too. And that is in the news for this week. If you like it, please share it. Thank you so much for joining me. I'll see you back here soon. Diabetes Connections is a production of Stacey Sims Media. All rights reserved, all wrongs avenged.